Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn and welcome to this week's edition of Carolyn's Caregiving Connection. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for the Lantern of Chagrin Valley Assisted Living just outside Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm joined by my two sister communities, Lantern of Madison and Lantern of Saybrook. Well, we are all part of the Lantern Lifestyle Company and we invite you to learn more about us at lanternlifestyle.com. All of our assisted living communities offer traditional assisted living as well as memory care services. We each have a weekly program. You can find out all about those programs on our website as well as our individual Facebook pages. This program is called Carolyn's Caregiving Connection. It is live every Thursday at 7 p.m. It's always recorded, so you can catch it at another time on our Facebook page, on LinkedIn, and now on the last month or so on YouTube. So we invite you to tune in, and we certainly welcome your comments. We invite you also to help us by uh, clicking on the like button, sharing your comments, asking your questions, and sharing. We're really trying to increase our uh, volume of viewers, and I'm happy to report that in the uh, last couple of months that we've had this program, we're getting close to 5,000 views a week. So for a smaller community, that's pretty impressive, and we're appreciative of that. So we thank you so much. Tonight, I'm joining you from my home office, and uh, so I uh, wanted to uh, take a moment now to talk about something that's important to us as we come to the end of the dog days of summer, if you will. So those of us who are caregivers to someone who's living in the community or in the local neighborhoods, not in an assisted living residence, are dealing with a whole separate set of uh, caregiving concerns and challenges. And certainly 2020 has been a year of challenges for everybody. The whole COVID situation has been tough on everyone, every age, uh, every life situation. So now though, we're gonna be compounded by the fact that we're still dealing with COVID and we're coming into the end of the year with those uh, challenges of weather. We're also coming into flu season and pneumonia season. So we got a couple whammies that are about to hit us, especially if we're over 60. So one of the things I wanna focus on tonight is our topic of top 10 tips in caring for an older loved one during fall season as we lead into winter. So whether you're a daughter, daughter-in-law, son, a spouse, or you simply have a neighbor, a church friend, someone in your family that you kind of care for and about, we hope that some of these tips will help you. You don't need to write anything down. All you need to do is uh, listen up. And if you have questions, have concerns, you'll have my phone number a little bit later. I welcome you to call me and I'll be happy to answer any questions or help you navigate to a service that you are interested in. So the first things that are, are part of my tips are uh, basically, um, first of all, if your loved one is living in their own home, pay attention to the physical space, the actual house or condo or whatever it may be. If it's not an apartment building, but it's actually their home or a mobile home or a condo, you want to make sure that that physical environment is safe. So take a look at the windows. Are any of the windows in need of repair? Is there any broken glass? Do all the locks work? Uh, do you have a winterizing uh, you know, shutters or plastic film? Do you actually have windows that are already ready for winter? Uh, do any of the windows in an older home in particular have screens? Do those screens need to be replaced or cleaned, what have you? Um, are there air conditioners that might be the room type air conditioner that needs to be either covered up for the winter or perhaps removed? And uh, another piece of uh, you know, the window put back in place, if you will. Uh, is the roof looking good? Are there anything uh, that needs a concern there? Are you seeing any leaks? Do you notice any roof shingles? Are the gutters clean? Do we need to have a service where the gutters can be taken care of as the leaves come down in uh, you know, uh, September and October? Uh, how is the um, driveway looking? Are there any big broken chunks or problems that will cause an issue for that person who is trying to leave the house and go to the end of the driveway to take the trash can or pick up the mail or pick up the newspaper, you know, those kinds of things. Um, do we have any concerns with the furnace? Does it need to be serviced? Does the furnace need new filters installed for winter? Is there anything related to the ductwork and needing to be cleaned? Again, just thinking literally about almost every facet of the physical space and considering routine maintenance taking a fresh eye to look at anything that may be not looking right to you and need some attention before we get into the dead of winter, if you will. Um, the thing that we also want to think about is getting ready for that season of, as I said, raking leaves. 
Is that loved one going to be able to rake leaves? Is it a small yard? Do we need to have a service that's involved? Maybe you have a landscaping service for the summer. Do you need to put a plan in place with maybe some local teenagers? Good luck on that. Uh, or perhaps a service. Some of the local senior centers actually have services that are paid for with grant monies to help have uh, leaves raked up or some yard work done or some winter prep of the home. So if you live in that Solon, Cleveland Heights, University Heights area of Northeast Ohio, call that senior center and ask about their uh, special programs. It's not everywhere, uh, but it is in some communities. So you see what they have. And they may even have affiliations with volunteer groups of the you know, young teenagers or people that are a part of volunteer efforts to come and do kind of what they call a D-I-A-D or done in a day projects. So you may have some help there. You wanna take a look at things like uh, the mail delivery. Does the mail get delivered every day to the house, which means now your loved one has to go to the end of the driveway or somewhere else to pick it up? Is this the time of year you might think about a post office box so that the mail can get picked up on a regular basis, but it doesn't have to be mom or dad or whomever you're caring about trying to get down to the driveway with a walker. Uh, we see people in our neighborhood with a walker trying to get their trash cans to the end of the driveway. I saw last winter. Uh, I've seen people, of course, trying to get their mail, trying to shovel their driveway, and they have a walker. Those are things that we're talking about and thinking about tonight. What services would be needed? Are there services that we might have someone in place already to do? Perhaps yourself, another relative, a neighbor, a volunteer, and we'll continue to talk about those. But the physical house itself is one that you really want to give some consideration to. The next one is, does your loved one still drive? If they're driving safely, that's great. If they're not driving safely, this is a perfect time to send a note, an email, or make a phone call to the physician and express your concern so that on that next appointment, they can kind of have a heads up that this person may or may not be able to continue to drive safely. It's the duty of that physician then to go ahead and report to the local police uh, in Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles or whatever state you're in that there is a concern. And then there's a whole follow-up process for that. You don't want someone with memory loss or someone that has an illness that prohibits um, reaction time, let's say Parkinson's or something, that maybe, yes, I'm only going to the grocery store, I'm only going down to the corner, but I wouldn't be able to re react quickly if a child ran out in front of me, if a dog ran out in front of me, if someone slipped into my lane quickly. So if you've got concerns about driving, make sure those are expressed. Now, it's a conversation you can also have with your loved one. It's not an easy conversation. If it's a conversation you need to have, again, I encourage you to um, talk with your senior center. There are a lot of programs. Most hospitals today actually have a screening program. It's called like Safe 55, and it's a simulator that they use to test reaction time. And even AARP offers driver safety programs and refreshers. So people that haven't driven in a while, maybe have had an illness or a muscle problem, you know, it may just mean that they need a little bit of extra support but that person that shouldn't be driving, shouldn't be driving, and you know in your heart. Let's say they're driving though, is the car in good shape? Does the car need to have a tune-up? Do the tires need to be rotated? Has it had an oil change lately? Is it filled up with washer fluid and all the things that we need when we're going out and about? Uh, is the garage in order? Does the garage door work? Is there a garage door opener? Does it work? Does it need batteries? Does it need any servicing? Um, is there anything you need to do with the car itself in terms of getting e-checks, renewing the tags, uh, updating insurance? Do you have AAA or another emergency road assistance program? Is it paid up? Uh, those kinds of things. Just making sure if there is a car, it's in good shape, it's been serviced, it's ready to go, and uh, you know all is in good order that way. The next area that I would say is uh, a concern for many people is the financial area. Now, if your loved one's able to handle their bills and be safe, that's terrific. But just for convenience, does it make sense to look at bill paying online? Uh, if we get Social Security, and I do actually, uh, our checks are coming directly to your bank account. So when those uh, you know checks come into the bank account, it's all done safely. I'm not getting it in the mail. I'm not at risk of someone you know, trying to knock me in the head while I walk to the bank or something like that. So most of us, your social security, your pension, whatever it is you may have as income, make sure that that's automatically deposited 
and you can check those accounts online. You just need an ID and a password. So if your loved one has that set up, you may also ask them if they will grant you access so that you can make sure the checks arrive and everything's safe and you can monitor the bank activity. We do that for older relatives in our own family. You can make sure that your bills are automatically paid online, especially your utility bills, your gas bill, your electric bill, your water bill, your phone bills. That way you're not worrying about bills that won't get paid, somebody forgets to pay them, you don't want to have uh, notices of you know utilities being shut off because somebody forgot. I can tell you that all throughout my career, I have worked with people who are living in their home in the very earliest stages of memory loss and that was the first sign to the uh, family members because they didn't pay the amount owed, they would pay the date. So today is 827.20, they would pay $827.20. Uh, or they would pay their address, you know, they would pay something, some number that they saw, but not necessarily the true amount. So again, be alert to options for bill paying. Uh, think about any of the credit cards that are used. If they're just everyday kinds of expenses, you may wanna limit the credit uh, being used to 500 or 1,000 so that person isn't at risk if someone gets their numbers or if their card gets lost or what have you. Um, today, more and more of us are using cards, if you will, when we're out and about instead of cash. Make sure you're aware of cash that's in the home. Is it in a safe place? A lot of people keep a little bit of spare cash in the house and they may keep it in the cookie jar or actually literally under the bed or someplace like that. You know, it's fine to have a few dollars that you have stashed away for, you know, that short emergency if you will but if your loved one has major amounts of money in that home uh, try to see if you can persuade them to do something a little bit more safe with it because it definitely puts them at risk and also god forbid something happens to them that money would be there and you may not even know it if they've hidden it under a floorboard or what have you uh, i've told the story on this program before that when my mother passed away of course we were getting rid of some of her things i got rid of her handbags and found out later she had put a hundred dollar bill and multiple handbags and um, she hid money behind the uh, pictures in the frames of the grandchildren she just hid money in different places it wasn't for confusion but it was from her years of being in the depression where she always wanted to have a little cash on hand so had i not known that um I would have lost the money and in fact I did lose the money on the handbag so you know be alert to that kind of thing you want to think about if you have any online accounts for your loved one whether it's banking accounts credit card accounts any insurance uh, accounts that you have for health insurance Medicare life insurance uh, car loans mortgages anything like that would that loved one grant you access uh, to have the ID and password so that you can also help monitor what's going on if not, you might encourage them to get a, even a little spiral notebook or uh, there are many apps for the phones and there are also little devices that you can get that let you record all your accounts, all your IDs, and all your passwords. Because again, if something should happen, not even that I pass away, but I become immobilized, I have a health issue, I can't speak for myself, I'm going to be hospitalized or go to a rehab center, no one will know how to access any of my accounts. So I may be at risk then of my mortgage not getting paid or you know whatever transactions normally happen because that person who's assisting me has no idea that I even have those accounts or how to access them. If you call on the phone, you're not gonna get access unless you are the power of attorney. So think about that. The next area would be medications. You know, a lot of us when we're older, we take uh, a few medications. So when you're thinking ahead to fall and then winter, take a look at the medication supply. Do you have a 90 day supply on hand? Do you have close to that? Uh, that's a good thing to have. Do you have mail order available to you or even set up so that you can get that 90 day supply sent to you and even have it on a routine order? Uh, many people take the same medication for chronic illness, blood pressure, diabetes, uh, thyroid, whatever it may be. And if those are medications that you take all the time, it's much more convenient and actually may be more um, inexpensive for you to get them sent to you from a mail order. Many of those medications are generic, so they're, they're very, very uh, inexpensive. So you want to have medications on hand and a service for them. If you don't, even some of the local drugstores today on a national level are going back to being able to deliver. So check your drugstore. I know that CVS does deliver now. So, you know, take a look at that. Is that an option for you? You don't want anyone running out of medications. 
do you have some devices or services that help you make sure that the medications are taken correctly? We can get the pill boxes, that's super easy. There are pill containers and pill boxes now that lock and they only lock at the time that you set it to open. So if I take heart medicine and I take it every day at two o'clock, that box will unlock for about 30 minutes so that I can take that medicine and it'll lock again so I can't take my medicine twice. It'll have a beeper or a doorbell sound. Again, many types of devices so your pharmacy can uh, let you know about those. You can call me, you can Google it. So uh, take a look at some of those options. You could also have some services maybe from your local um, home health provider. Uh, perhaps you can go in and help set up medications in advance. You know, some of those pill boxes go up to 30 days at a time. So you can have everything set. There's no confusion, no problem with someone uh, not having their medications on hand. So aside from prescriptions, you also want to look at what is called over-the-counters. And those would be the types of um, medicines that are like Tums, Bengay, um, the things, band-aids, those kind of supplies, aspirin, cough syrup, things that we typically would use as needed. We don't need a prescription for them, but when you need them, you need them. So you want to have a supply of those on hand. And if you take those regularly, uh, now's the time to go ahead and get them. If you're going to the Costco or the Sam's Club or paying attention to the, you know, drugstore ads when they have the BOGOs, the buy one, get one free, that's a great time to stock up on those kinds of supplies. And that way you can have some in each bathroom. So if there's one bathroom, of course you're all set, but if you have a upstairs and a downstairs bathroom, you may want to have a small supply in both locations so someone's not trying to go up and down the stairs, if you will. Do you have a COVID prep kit at home? None of us had this a year ago, so if you have it, you're, you're on top of things. You can take an old cosmetic bag, a shaving kit, and even just a Ziploc bag and put some supplies in it you would need for COVID readiness. So that might be uh, disposable gloves, some disposable masks. And today, most of the stores that were out a few months ago have those masks in pretty good supply right now, and you can get quite a volume for less than $10. So get your supply of masks, get your supply of gloves, get that hand sanitizer. I noticed at my local grocery store that some of the national uh, companies like Suave, you know, we know who they are, they have the hand gel now in little tubes uh, that you can put in your handbag or drawer or your COVID prep kit for $1.99. So, you know, those are the things you want in there. You want to also have a list of your medications. So if somebody was coming to your home or you had to grab this kit maybe for whatever reason and leave your home, you've got your medications. You might even also put a healthcare power of attorney copy in there. Most of us, if we have a healthcare power of attorney, we have uh, already recorded at our local hospital. So if you have done that, then you're in a good place. But, you know, keep a couple things that you need in an emergency ready to go. I know my husband and I, uh, at least myself for a number of years, I always had an emergency overnight bag. Uh, there were times when I took care of my mother and I never knew if I'd be called from work and had to go there and stay a few days. There have been times when in my type of work, I would stay at our retirement communities overnight. And then in my own health issues, uh, I had times when I wasn't sure I'd end up in a hospital. So I had my bag ready to go with the, you know, overnight sleepwear and your favorite slippers and the extra pair of glasses. And then you can have some of these things that you know you might need just so you can grab and go. There's nothing worse than knowing that somebody went to the hospital in an ambulance and now you're watching over them trying to help them and you have no idea where these things may be located in their home, you know. So in your survey, or excuse me, your COVID <laughs> readiness kit, you want those things that, again, you might need readily. So the, if you have the list of medications, which you can get right from your drugstore or your pharmacy group, if you have um, your uh, gloves, your mask, your sanitizer, any things like that that you would want to have, that's a good thing to have. The next thing I wanted to talk about is a top 10, and we're up at number six now, is safety issues. So when you're getting ready for fall, you want to think ahead to many older people kind of live, if you will, in their living room and kitchen. Even if they have a big home, they don't always use the second floor. They don't always sleep in the bedroom. They kind of live in a smaller space in the winter. Some of that is to conserve heat and be more you know, fuel efficient or less expense for them. And some of it is just that it's easier to physically navigate a smaller space. So if that's the case, you want to be alert to things like no throw rugs. No throw rugs. Those are the greatest falls risk. No throw rugs whatsoever. 
make sure that those slippers fit and you're not using those little slide on scuffs. Uh, the scuffs, again, I start to step and that scuff gets stuck on the floor or gets snagged on a piece of carpet and it causes the person to fall. So while they're comfortable and we all love nice slippers, make sure the slippers are in the style of a shoe. No extension cords, no extension cords. They're forbidden actually by law in assisted living communities and they should be forbidden in most homes. Again, they get overloaded easily. If we get things like that at the dollar store, it may be a fake UL listing and they're just a hazard. So you don't need extra cords, period, and you certainly don't need extension cords. Be, be alert to that. Check your smoke detectors. Do the batteries need to be replaced? Do you have fire extinguishers where they need to be? Definitely in the kitchen. You know, Do you have the stickers that you can get usually from your fire department or your office on aging that say senior, older person, or even pet? And there you put them right on the windows where that older person might be at night so that if there were an emergency or a fire, they know exactly which window or which door, which section of the home to target, if you will. The other thing you might look at is, uh, you know, things like anything in the home that's broken. A lot of us have things that we keep. I'm going to get that fixed. You know, so we've talked in past weeks about uh, lamps that have, they're beautiful, they're, but they're from long ago. And those cords are a little frayed, so we put the black electrical tape. Same thing with vacuum cleaners, toasters. Don't have items that have frayed cords on them. You know, if you have uh, front doors and back doors that lock, make sure the locks are safe. Do you want to install a security system like Ring or something that's easy so that your loved one is going to be able to see who's coming to the home? You're going to be able to have, um, you know, uh, notifications and alerts sent right to your cell phone if that's your desire and if they agree. So again, thinking of all those things. If someone is um, living in a larger home and that washer and dryer is in the basement, you might suggest that they don't do laundry until someone else is with them, whether it's you, another family member, or a paid service. But you certainly don't want people trying to go up and down basement steps and when there's no one else in the home if they're at risk. Now, we can also get the medical alert uh, items, and they kind of look like this. They look like a pendant. This is a necklace, of course, but they look like a pendant. It's that whole I've fallen and can't get up commercial. They're very inexpensive. They're $30 a month. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them online. Some hospital systems have them, and they're going to be that best friend for someone who has fallen and doesn't want to lie in that spot for one, two, three days. So that's something to take a look at. Um, the next thing you might want to think about is, again, that... Um, uh, idea of is fall a time when it gives us a chance to declutter and we've talked about that in some past programs too so getting rid of throw rugs like we said getting rid of, of the uh, things that we often keep on the floor we save those magazines we save those newspapers I'm going to get to that you know we put our knitting or our hobby items on the floor make sure that floor is clear and it's safe and my husband will say, he, I'm preaching to the choir here, but, uh, you know, we all have some challenges there. Is this the time when you're visiting during fall, you can take a peek inside the fridge, take a peek inside the cupboards, pantry, and the uh, freezer. Are there any outdated expired items? This is a great time to just go ahead and toss those and replenish the staples. So if you need salt and pepper and flour and, you know, olive oil and all those kinds of regular things, get them now. You know, go ahead and be set for fall and winter. Is the stove in good repair? You know, uh, does the fridge need a new filter installed? Is everything working properly? Do you need to pull it away and maybe clean the dust that gets behind or under the appliances? So what do we need to do for that? Is this the time to take a peek in the closets? You know, is there a fall jacket or a few fall jackets and sweaters? Is there a winter coat? Does everything need to be sent to the cleaners or is it ready to go? Are there things that your loved one isn't wearing anymore? Maybe their weight has gone up or their weight has gone down. Let's go ahead and donate those items. Is there a good pair of, you know, shoes, at least a few pairs? Do you have winter boots? Do you have the things that you're going to need for the weather to come? And if so, are they clean? Are they in good repair? Not things that you meant to take to the shoe repair and you didn't, or you meant to take to the cleaners. Go ahead and take care of those things now. Um, the other thing would be, um, going into our next idea, what about supplies that we routinely need, like incontinent supplies? You know, when someone is incontinent and they're using items like Depends, 
pull-ups, pads, those kinds of things, those packages can get large and bulky and they're difficult to carry into the home. You can get all of them at the big box stores, the Sam's Club, uh, Costco, much more inexpensively. Same thing with Boost and those kinds of products. If you're using them regularly, think about the big box store or Amazon.com or Walmart or wherever you can get your best pricing and check your health insurance because some of the plans today will, will give you assistance in paying for those products. Now, it may not be the national brand name, but it may be something that you can work with. And if your loved one has Medicaid, most likely those products are able to be uh, reimbursed or uh, actually ordered through a pharmacy. So check into that for sure. You also want to know um, if you're looking at um, groceries, we were talking about that kind of thing. Um, are you stocked for the winter? Like I said, we talked about the staples a few minutes ago. But what about routine uh, grocery delivery? You know, if you wish most bigger grocery stores today, you can go online, you can set up an account, you can order that same order that's every two weeks, you know, a half gallon of milk, a loaf of bread, a dozen eggs, whatever it is, and then that order is ready every two weeks and it's either delivered by the store, it's a curbside pickup, or you can use a service like Instacart. Um, so that you are you automatically know your loved one has a certain amount of items that are delivered every week, every two weeks, whatever frequency you choose. You can also just now and again go ahead and order and make sure that those things are ready to go so that your loved one isn't having to walk through the store, be exposed to other people regarding COVID, uh, deal with wet floors. It could be that you're going and doing a curbside pickup. Someone else in your world, your family, you know, is going to do that for you. And you put it all on a credit card. So there's no cash. You're not touching anything. And Instacart actually is used by some of the folks in our assisted living community to get those specialty things that they like. So that's a good thing. Well, what about preparing the foods? Meals on Wheels is an option for some, and you need to apply for Meals on Wheels through your local senior center, and they'll tell you all about the program in your area. But many restaurants today are catering to seniors and people that are living at home and don't want to come out to restaurants. So, of course, you can call any restaurant and get a meal and go pick it up, but a number of restaurants in our area are actually preparing those uh, kind of grab-and-go meals and in bulk. So you can call, and they're nutritious. A lot of them are organic. You get just what you need, and you pick up a week's supply at a time. And that way, they're ready to go. These are things that are not like a fast food meal or a frozen meal. They're meals that have already been freshly prepared. You may also find that you have um, uh, food items that you can get that are... Um, maybe prepared by a local cooking school. They do some of that kind of thing. You may have people that you know that are willing to make a few meals in advance for you. So take a look at options to have meals prepared so that your loved one isn't kind of struggling uh, at a time that they you know, might have difficulty with pots and pans and lifting and pouring, uh, or they're just not interested in doing all that work. And so they're kind of, now I'm going to eat what's in the fridge. So I'm going to eat cold cereal and then tomorrow I'm going to have cookies and I, there's an orange back in the corner here. And they're not getting the nutrition and the vitamins and the hydration that they need. And those have all been topics on past shows. Do you have bottled water in the house? Try to have at least a case or two of bottled water. Uh, if the person likes that you're caring for likes coffee or tea or soft drinks or iced tea, whatever it is, have a supply on that on, of that on hand. Uh, you also want to think about things like um, paper products. For a lot of people going to the store, carrying one of those gigantic packages of toilet paper, if you can find it, uh, is unwieldy. May not be that heavy, but it's bulky. It's odd. You know, so go ahead and stock them up. Get that toilet tissue, the facial tissue, your paper towels. Grab a couple bottles of laundry detergent and softener. Go ahead and think ahead to the toiletries. You know, a lot of the drugstores, of course, every weekend are having sales and the Sunday papers. So you take a look at, you know, does uh, this person need a few bottles of shampoo and some body uh, gels and all this kind of thing. Get what they need, the toothpaste. If you belong to a Medicare Advantage program or your loved one we're speaking of, chances are they may be getting some support for those kinds of things. And you may get a few dollars each month. 25 30 40 dollars a month so once a quarter they send you a little a catalog or an online link and you can order those types of products and the over-the-counters we were talking about like band-aids and tums and 
uh, cough syrups and you get all that and it's sent to your home. So take advantage of programs that uh, you may not even be thinking about. And your health insurance is one and then just buying in bulk, getting everything into that home before winter so that when your loved one, even if they're able to drive and even if they're able to go to the grocery store, they don't want to have to come home with 20 bags and big giant packages of things that are going to make them, again, a risk for a fall. So Having a couple uh, cases of bottled water is a really safe thing to do. Have some extra batteries. Uh, as we mentioned before, be alert to having any doctor's appointments ahead that you can. So is it the time that I'm going to go get my flu shot now before it starts snowing? I'm going to double check and make sure I've had my pneumonia, my tetanus, maybe even a shingle shot. Uh, do I need to think ahead about... Um, at that time, doing anything else with the pharmacist? Am I on top of things for my medications for the winter? Do I need any other supplies that I can get while I'm out and about, like my hearing aid batteries? Uh, do I have an extra pair of glasses? Maybe I can stash and make sure they're kept safe in case something happens to my good pair. You know, those kinds of things, just kind of thinking ahead. And even the regular batteries, uh, you might have flashlights throughout the house. I certainly would say this is a time to check your bulbs, make sure all your lights have the correct bulbs. Most of us are switching to LED lighting. Um, for safety reasons, I definitely recommend the night lights, the motion sensor lighting, so that if uh, my loved one is sleeping, they get up and they need to use the bathroom, the light comes on. They're not fumbling and what we call table walking, touching everything to try to get to that bathroom and they're likely to fall. So let's have the lighting that you're talking about very inexpensive uh, little lights that are a couple dollars. You can get them everywhere, you know, today. All the discount stores and uh, Lowe's and Home Depot, all those kinds of places. So uh, kind of in summary, when you, you think about getting ready for fall, we're kind of at the end of the summer. We've had a great summer to the degree that we can with COVID. But for those of you who might have been uh, working remotely, now you're being called back to the workplace. You may have kids or grandkids trained kids, excuse me, that are now in school and you want to be a part of their lives and maybe some of their school happenings or sports activities, whatever's happening in your community, the time and availability that you had in the summer to watch over your loved one may not be there now. So some of the tips that we've shared tonight are things that will save you a few minutes, possibly a few hours. They may save you a few dollars and they'll help to ensure that the persons you're caring for and about are in a safer place less stress, and able to continue to manage as we come into those bad weather times. We don't know what's ahead for us right now every day, and certainly during these COVID times, we don't know. So we want to make sure that as best we can, we're thinking ahead. Now, if you feel you need some help beyond what we've been talking about, and you might want to have professionals, believe me, on every topic we address tonight, there are professionals to help. There are drivers to get you to the doctor's appointments. There are drivers to take someone to the grocery store. There are people that will come and do all the home repairs that we talked about. You can have your car serviced at the garage. Uh, there are home health agencies that can come in and help pay bills, help with the cleaning and the laundry, even as little as four hours a week. And we've had several agencies on in our past programs, so you can find those on our uh, Facebook page and take a look at those. So whatever you need, if you're able to do it yourself to help someone, that's terrific. If you're not, call on that other relative. If you've got some people that can say, I can't do everything, but I can handle paying bills online. I can do shopping orders online. I can help come and get the house uh, straightened out. I can declutter a closet. Call on your family members to help. And if you're not able to pull those things together, see what you can do to have a paid service, many of which may be available to you, again, through your senior center, your office on aging, or your greater community through a grant or another program that you weren't even really thinking of. So if you have any questions on anything we talked about tonight, uh, please give me a call. I'm very uh, willing and able and pleased to be able to help you with questions and answers. We know a lot of resources at The Lantern, and we're happy to get you in that right direction. So again, my name is Carolyn, and my direct phone number is 440-557-1104. And um, our goal is to assist you in any way that we can. Every week now, on Thursdays, we have our Carolyn's Caregiving Connection. If you have a topic you'd like us to cover, if you are someone who works in the senior living realm and you have a service you'd like people to know about, please uh, let us know. We'd be happy to talk with you about it. 
And again, we invite you to visit all of our social media pages to learn more about us and to like, comment, and share so that we can continue to reach the audience that we have. So the greatest takeaway for tonight as we come in to the fall season from summer is that we don't know what's ahead. The thing that's going to give us the best plan is to have a plan. So start somewhere, start small, but get get your feet on the ground to have some action steps that will help your loved one be as safe as they can in their own home as we go from the end of 2020 into the beginning of 2021. So as always, I thank you for listening tonight and tuning in to Carolyn's Caregiving Connection. And until I see you again, and I will send you my best for today and always.